Thursday is the first day of winter in the northern hemisphere, otherwise known as the winter solstice, which means it is the shortest day of the year. CBS News science and futurist contributor and theoretical physicist Michio Kaku is here to talk more about this. Welcome, Professor. Glad to be on the show. So first of all, here in New York City, the sun will be in the sky for a little over nine hours, and that's about six hours less than in June at the summer solstice. So explain to us, what is the winter solstice? Well, it's the shortest day of the year because the Earth tilts in its orbit around the sun. Mm. If the Earth did not tilt, <laughs> then we would not have winter solstice at all. Because we have a tilt here, it means that we are experiencing a cold when Australia, Australia on the other side of the Earth, mm -hmm. is experiencing the longest day of the year. I see. And so the seasons are reversed when you go below the equator. Okay, and it does not have to do with the actual elliptical orbit because once, as I was saying, you off camera that was a subject of very heated debate among some colleagues right. in my <laughs> the orbit of the earth is a near circle so it's ah. not because we're closer to the sun, sun or farther from the sun uh -huh. the orbit of the sun is a near circle okay all right so let's talk about some um, of the specifics here the date and time of the solstice also changes from year to year do astronomers know why that is yeah, because the Earth's orbit is actually not a perfect circle. That's it why. is slightly elliptical, and that means that the winter solstice does change a bit. In fact, the Romans, thousands of years ago, this, uh, celebrated the winter solstice on December 25, mm. which today is called Christmas. Ah. In fact, we think it used to be a pagan holiday, because during the shortest day of the year, the crops were in, people were bored, the grapes were fermenting, <laughs> so why not be of good cheer and get drunk? <laughs> Any excuse to party in those winter months, I That's guess. That's right. Um, so let's talk about some of our cosmic neighbors. Pluto, for instance, has a really extreme tilt. As I read it, it's 119 and a half degrees. Is that right? I mean, that is extreme. Uh, can you just talk about Earth and what allows Earth to be ha habitable? I mean, what is it that makes our particular planet so hospitable to life? Well, you know, the ancients used to worship the summer and winter solstice. Mm -hmm. Look at Stonehenge because it was a calendar. They could calculate the future mm. using this calendar. On other planets in the solar system and around the universe, the tilt is not 23 degrees. Therefore, the winter solstice is not predictable so much. And in fact, some of them don't even have a winter solstice. In some planets, we think, summer is the equivalent of six months winter is the equivalence of six months other planets it is perpetual daylight on one side and perpetual night on the other and life cannot exist we think in those planets so we owe our very existence to a winter solstice which is regular predictable and gives us a temper temperate climate yeah, and let's talk about temperatures here, though, because you might have daylight a little bit more each day, but the temperature actually gets colder. Help us understand that. That's right. The coldest day of the year is actually late January, and the hottest day of the year is actually in July, because there's a lag called the seasonal lag, mm. because we forget the fact that the ground and the oceans are like reservoirs of heat that give off heat and absorb heat slowly. Mm. So, for example, in June, when it's very hot, then the oceans start to continue to give off heat even as the days get shorter and shorter. And that's why in July it's really hot because the oceans and the ground are still giving off heat. So it violates common sense and that's called the seasonal lag. So watch out, come January, that's going to be the hottest days, uh, coldest days of the year. Okay, not something that I look forward to, but nevertheless, uh, that explains a lot. Michio Kaku, thanks so much for stopping by.